everyone. How about this conference, huh? Woo! Yes. I hope you're all awake from lunch. Uh, once again, thank you for voting for me. I hope I can live up to your expectations. So I'm um, just going to introduce myself real short. My name is Ramon. Uh, I'm from Chile, and I live in, in Austria, in Vienna. And uh, if you've seen me on Twitter, you might have seen a picture of me with my dog. And don't worry, there are pictures of my dog coming. Her name is Fiona, and she is the absolute love of my life. She has these eyes that just tell so much emotion. My favorite is the top right one. She's judging my wife for eating mango. And, <laughs> and there's this term we have in Chilean Spanish. It's called uh, regalona, right? It, I, I'm having a hard time translating it. It's something like a spoiled but beloved child. Right? And I thought, OK, I'll try to translate it. I'll go use good old Google Translate. Didn't work, um, which is fine. I thought, OK, well, German has a 1,000 more words than English does. Let's try it in German. Here's what's interesting. It didn't do it, but it capitalized the R. <laughs> <laughs> so um, does anybody know this game? This game is called Just Dance. And it's uh, what is currently the staple of dancing video games. Basically, you dance to the rhythm and you get points for how well you dance. When I was younger, however, we had something called Dance Dance Revolution, or DDR, as I'm going to refer to it from now on. And uh, it's <laughs> a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I spent a large chunk of my youth just going da 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 And uh, so the graphics, you know, they haven't aged that well, but, you know, it's a lot of fun. What you have is a controller on the floor that you dance with your feet, you press on them when the arrows come up. It's simple, but hard to get good at. And let me tell you, the music was 2000 Zacular. Let me, sh let me show you if I can get this to work. All right, let me lower the volume so I don't explode anybody's ears. OK, that's enough of that. <laughs> so it was, it was a lot of fun. And um, I miss that game. And, and uh, when I met my wife, I introduced her to it, but she never got the chance to play it with when she was younger. And it turns out, now I'm not sure if this is open source, but there is a free program called Step Mania, which is kind of an emulation of Dance Dance Revolution. And you can use your own controller, which we did. You could buy these foam mats. And they were super fun. They weren't that expensive, maybe six, between 16 and 30 euros, something like that. But the problem with them is that they last maybe three weeks before some of the contacts start, start working and you have to get used to seeing this screen a lot. <coughs> so in the arcades, they had these metallic ones with actual buttons that mm, went down. And those were great. And you can buy them. But look at the price. Like, just look at the regular price. It's a thousand smackers, you know? So anyway, I was, uh, has anybody heard of the Maker Fair? I, I think they have one in Hamburg, right? Berlin, at least. Well, we have one in Vienna. And I went there uh, once, and I met these people who made something called Bear Conductive Paint. Has anybody heard of it? That's a few hands. That's pretty cool. This stuff is incredible, because what it is is that paint, it's paint that conducts electricity. So you can draw circuits, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But what I did not know is that it's also capacitative. That means that you can touch it and activate a signal. So that got me going. I was like, I'm thinking I could make something out of this. And I saw that they have a, a Node.js wrapper that lets you run your own stuff, and you can build your own programs that interact with that paint. So that just kept me going. I think I could make something out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I love this GIF. And, uh, and I saw that Stepmania allows you to configure your keys. And that's when I thought, what if I take a yoga mat, a, Pi con uh, a, a bare conductive Pi adapter, a Raspberry Pi Zero, some paint itself, and some Node.js. And lo and behold, 
Project Dance Mat was born. <laughs> now, um, before this project, I had never worked with hardware before. I'd, never, I'd only tinkered a little bit with Raspberry Pis for watching movies and junk, but not, never really done anything. So I was going into this pretty blind. So, and I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it and it'll be fun. Here's my plan. So I will plug my dance mat into a computer and the computer will recognize it as a keyboard, which is all well and good. Then I looked at the node, uh, at the node wrapper. Now, it's only a handful of lines to really start saying which uh, electrode, which end of the pie cap was touched, and then I can interact with it accordingly. There's their uh, node pie cap module. I set my uh, sensitivities for touching and letting go, and then I can recognize touches, which is pretty cool. Now, I didn't know this going in, but you can't have a Raspberry Pi pretend it's a USB keyboard out of the box. Now, as I was told very kindly over lunch, I could have used an Arduino, yes, but I was more familiar with Raspberry Pi, so I bought the adapter for that instead. Which, okay, I thought, all right, there is a way to have the Raspberry Pi be configured as a USB keyboard so that the computer can recognize it as a keyboard. Turns out it, it's pretty rough. You have to write some sort of kernel extension to Linux or something. And I gave it a try. I gave it the good college try. But after maybe a week, I was just frustrated beyond relief. Lilo and Stitch is the best Disney movie ever. Don't at me. <laughs> um, but other people have tried before. And there is this pretty great blog that lets you copy paste everything and then you're good to go. And when you plug your Raspberry Pi into your computer via USB, you get this incredible sound. You have no idea how relieving that is to hear. So, um, what I did next was I had to look into the USB HID specification because what I need to do is send, have this Raspberry Pi program in Node send a keystroke over to my computer when I touch one of the electrodes. Okay, so they have their own 300 megabyte PDF manual I can go through. And what I managed to glean from that was I need to send a keystroke in the form of an, a byte array made of eight hexadecimal keys. Now, my experience with this kind of thing comes from university, and I don't remember how to do any of that. But I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. Turns out it wasn't too hard to do. I found someone who very nicely on GitHub put up which hexadecimal code corresponds to which key press, right? And then I could match each uh, each touch of an electrode on the pie cap to represent one of these keys. So then what I did was I just mapped it accordingly, right? Left, right, up, and down will press A, B, C, and D on the keyboard. And cool, so that's, I'm already one step further. Um, so I could um, parse the keys from that data, from those electrodes, and then build up a keystroke from each of those, from all of the hexadecimal keys. What happens is that this, pro, this, loop, this uh, piece of code here is being constantly run, checking for pressed electrodes, right? Which means you can support touching more than one arrow at the same time, which is relieving because otherwise there's a lot of notes in DDR that are jumping like this, or like this, or like this. I'm gonna be sweating by the end of this. Um, and you can have that work. So, I could parse each of them depending on which electrode is pressed from left to right, there's 12 in total, and I could have them represent each arrow. I would just have to remember which one is mapped to which one when I'm drawing the paint later on. You'll see what I mean. So then I could parse, <laughs> then I could turn that into an array of hexadecimal codes. Now, you'll see here, the code is not exactly the nicest, but what it does is it builds up an array of eight hexadecimal codes. And if I'm not pressing eight keys at the same time, it'll just append a bunch of zeros to that. Everybody with me so far? Okay. 
cool. <laughs> um, right, so once that was done, I was able to just have it run like this, log out the keystroke, I could run it and then touch each of these diodes at the top, you see them? Um, and then it would just print out how many keys I was pressing. It was a mess, but it worked. So now I have to take that keystroke string and turn it into a bug array. This is where I'm like, oh God, I need Google. <laughs> so I went on and I found out that it's actually not too tricky. Um, I just build a buffer out of that keystroke. JavaScript does it for you. Wonderful, great. And now I have to actually send that keystroke via the USB HID uh, system into my computer. What? I don't know what to do. So after some research and talking to other friends, I came upon <laughs> file descriptors. Anybody, anybody not know what file descriptors are? Cool. What, what file descriptors are is, um, is, is, an, is it's a file that lives on your Unix or Linux system that you can send information to and that interacts via input or output to a computer. So the way you're, uh, you're communicating with a device connected to your computer is via, a, uh, via this file. So you send raw data to this file, which is good. That means that I can send, um, I can send my byte array to this file and this file will communicate with my computer. We with me so far? Cool. So I, turns out, because NPM has everything and everybody's done something for it, there's a, there's a package I can use. And what this does is it allows me to communicate with Linux files descriptors. Awesome. So all I had to do was require it, open up that file. You see, um, it's in the dev folder. That's where most file descriptors live. I'm no expert. Um, so with that, all I had to do was add one more line that writes that buffer, that uh, byte array of keys into the device, which in turn goes over to the computer, which is all well and good, but it turns out I have to close that file once the program ends. So I did that. It, lets you, it allows you on exit to close that file, and then I won't have any problems with memory or something. So that worked pretty well, and uh, by running node gensmat, .js, I was able to get it working. And so what I did was I took the Raspberry Pi with the Pi cap connected to it, plugged it into a computer, and opened up a text, uh, a text editor. Because in theory, I'm just sending keystrokes, right? And look at that. I could write not a lot, but I could. Yeah, a DNA sequence. I'm taking your word for that. <laughs> So next up is arguably the most fun part. It's the painting. So my wife and I, we bought a yoga mat and just drew some arrows on it, which is fine. You could even have it be compatible with two players. Oh, I can't really see that here, but there's two sets of arrows. And once that was done, we filled them in, we connected them to the Raspberry Pi, and we started up Step Mania, and we could play. And I got really bad over the years. <laughs> but hey, it worked. So what, could I, what did I take away from this? I think it's important for you as well to remember that it's good to play around with the stuff you have. Even if you're only stepping slightly out of your comfort zone, try something new. Ask for help. People know about this stuff. <laughs> there's lots of blog posts. There's lots of NPM packages that ha handle this stuff. And so what I want to tell you, dear friends, is to, you know, as I said, ah, oh, good, the gift failed. Um, just go for it. You know, it's, it's important to just try something. So that's me. Thanks, everyone. Do you have any more questions to Ramon? Uh, no, you don't have to play barefoot because since it's capacitative, it can work with socks. Uh, you just have to set the, the sensitivity to be a little 
higher. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the question is how durable the paint is. Um, so we've been using it pretty much every day for about six months now. <laughs> My wife and I compete a lot. And uh, so far, so good. I haven't seen any cracks. If I could do it again, I wouldn't use a yoga mat because it kind of absorbs kind of the, some of the paint. So a flat surface, like, like a piece of cardboard, actually, would probably be better. Yeah, um, that was a concern of mine. The question is, how did I handle latency? That is, how much time it took between me pressing the button and the game registering the press. Um, I did notice that there was a bit, but what Step Mania allows you to do is set that, uh, 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 set a, what's, what's the term? Like a delay on the keystroke, and then it was no problem at all. I just had to adjust it, and it was fine. Bit hacky, but, pardon? Cheating, yes, exactly. But what are we if not cheaters? <laughs> Where did I get the paint? Okay, uh, first off, I'm not in any way relate, affiliated with Bear Conductive, <laughs> nor am I sponsored by them, but they have a website. I think it's bearconductive.co.uk. It's not cheap. I think a tub, like a tub of the paint, I think you saw in one of my earlier slides, is something like 30 bucks, something like that. So it's not like dirt cheap, but it is relatively cheap. I mean, it's less than $1,000 for a metal dance mat. <laughs> yes? So the question is, uh, if it's possible to make this with makey-makey? Oh, um, well, I haven't heard of makey-makey or whatever we're going to call it. Has anybody heard of it? Yeah? Maybe you want to... Yeah, I cannot answer that, but makey makey, it's just that you uh, put two electrodes to some item like a banana or whatever, oh. and then you get the, those signs as well. Yeah. Then that should totally work. Right, you can paint with regular paints, yes. That would totally work, absolutely. I mean, if you want to come chat to me later you can, and ask me questions one-on-one, -on -one, that's also fine. Okay. Then thank you for the great talk. <laughs> <laughs>